Hi, this is Rhonda Kitchens. I'm going to take you to the zine page I created about my presentation today. I'm going to go here to academics, of course, go to the library. The library's midsection has quite a few little things you may not have ever looked at before. Let me bring my page down. Over here, event services and forms. These may all be familiar. Guess what? Passion Project November 9th. Put it on your calendar. I'll be sending a save a date soon under here more forms events and services so we have some forms and I put zines right here now the first thing I started out with was a definition um, not a lot of faculty students staff or community here probably know what a zine is they're old and they're new again like so many things the reason I'm bringing this up, I think I sent out a letter that kind of described one of the processes. This is the kind of content we would like to uh, collect as a library to support our students, but it would also be something I would like the library to curate and help create. And this is the point of this. Um, you'll see up here, check out the zine wagon. I would like to help you with this process if you're interested in doing it. Now this particular process, uh, writing a zine, creating a zine, or having like a zine creation process is useful for committees, uh, working groups, divisions, uh, work areas, absolutely students, um, all sorts of different things. It doesn't have one application, so I'm going to try to cover them all. But this is my offer. There will be a zine wagon. Now this ceiling wagon, I can roll it to your classroom. I could set it up in the back room, back room or back area of the library to help you do a project and kind of provide you with material and spiritual support. I can let you check out the zine wagon. I can let anyone, including a student, absolutely staff, come check out the zine wagon just like you would a book and take it to a place to use it. It's going to have materials set up and I have videos here you'll see selected videos and if we talk about the project I'll try to find some other things to help support this piece my support extends also to this while you're doing this scene project why don't you write about it why don't you do a presentation about it and guess what if you need to do some research I'm here to help you but I'm also going to tell you some places for you to do research on zines because guess what? I'm not an expert. I'd like to tell you, in fact, I am zine curious. And the reasons for this, I've been seeing some uh, student support issues I've seen, and just an increasing interest in seeing not just our students consume information, but to create things from it, to write their own information for others to consume. And I would be glad to create a space, ways, support. I would be glad to help you with your research. I could do a variety of things to make sure you feel comfortable in doing a presentation or publishing on this work. Just reach out to me. I would also like to hear your ideas. Now essentially at the very 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 basic part of things zines have been around I would say for centuries but uh, the literature says something like the 30s and it had its heyday and I think this is the important part when we're talking to people about zines it's something uh, to be a point of pride for Washington State to be a major major center of this type of media this creative piece of text image do-it-yourself energy and creating a space oftentimes for the marginalized for new ideas and getting them out not using traditional lines of communication and if you feel like some social media or TikTok has covered these areas you probably haven't looked at some of the zines lately so they could be a variety of things if you were in the presentation today i would have passed around some things that were held together with rubber bands some things that are very slick some of them you're like oh my goodness this is just quarters of pieces of paper cut up with a really pretty cover and one single stapler i'm like yes and i also talked about creating and some of the uh readings you see when they talk about a one page zine an eight page zine it is slightly complicated the first time you cut one up, but it's totally possible to create extremely cheap. And I would be able to help you set something like that up. And I do have a video that explains it 8,000 times better than I ever will.
So zines have a great history. They have something to do with Washington State. They have something to do with the absolute grooviness of do it yourself and also recognizing yourself as someone very important, someone with a voice and someone with things to say. When we think about zines, uh, we'll see a lot of actually when you go down here and, and you see this list, you'll see some well-known feminists actually started with zines. Guess who else had a zine? Who kind of helped create a culture in themselves? RuPaul. RuPaul had a zine. I believe he used to sell it in Atlanta. Probably the Lower East Side was a little bit perkier. But we also have some other things that people before, like even say uh, before the 1930s, Jose Guadalupe Posada, while certainly was affiliated with a printing company, but sometimes did broadsides and other types of do-it-yourself publications. They folded up and passed out among people. And when you see these images, these pieces have become iconic. They also put them in a position to earn more money and be in a printing industry while maintaining some social justice and ideas of revolution and forever and always changing our view of various holidays and having different feelings towards things that went on in different parts of history. That's right. Zines have a great power. You probably see them all the time and you didn't even know that you saw them. So that's kind of my history of it. It's richer than I can tell you. I do have here some great videos if you'd like to see it. Google's a great place to find the history of zines very confidently. In fact, you'll see a lot of the same information pretty much uh, copied over and shared over and over again. So I have selected videos here. You have Google for this part. So let's go to the part that's a little bit different, the bibliography. First of all, as part of this presentation, I really wanted you to understand, um, be it staff, faculty, that the librarian, the library, and the librarian, I'm here to help you out. There's absolutely no reason for you to tackle a project and just do Google research on it. Certainly it could be very effective, but I'd like you to know there's better ways to look at things. Um, the scholarly process, the peer reviewed process, the transparency, of those particular types of literature will provide you with lots of things that you can avoid. Pitfalls, in fact, large, huge, yawning ones. I want you to be aware of those uh, when heading into perhaps zinery, or sometimes it's kind of like if you know me in person, it's like what you fear, what's really gonna be the thing you should be afraid of. You know, like the time I was worried about mountains, but it was actually the murder ghost in Cheyenne, Wyoming that was going to get me. And usually I'll refer to it as sharks and ladders. You know, you think this is going to be the difficult part, but it's actually something else. Uh, ladders kill more people than sharks ever will. But have you ever met anybody scared of ladders? So research helps you kind of illuminate those sorts of things and understand them in a more level-headed way and to elude real danger. Please go swimming. Don't go swimming with a ladder. So I need to make sure you understand that I have created a Google link and databases A to Z that finds Google Scholar full text. Okay, so suppose you want to do a zine project in communications or community engagement. Let's just see if we have one here. If you go over here, these are full text. If you go here, that's going to be a paywall. You go here, you can find things that are newer, younger, and whatnot. So here, you're probably going to go to ProQuest. Here, you're going to go to a PDF someone uh, uploaded somewhere. I'd say these pretty much resolve 85% of the time. You also have the option for Cited By. So you can find, if that article works, you can find the other places that cited them. So... I don't have to be a zine scholar here. I can be the person that helps build you spaces where you can do your research in a way that's quite brilliant. So there's that part. There's a how-to video that will show you under three minutes how to do everything. Um, ProQuest Research Library, I believe most of you, I uh, hope, do know about this. It does have uh, scholarly articles, uh, trade magazines, newspapers, and other types of papers involved in it. So it's just not one point of view. 
uh, when you're working on projects like that, there's a great value in a trade magazine or something that tells you how to do it on a practical level, but you also will probably appreciate seeing a scholarly review where they take you through all the points so that you can replicate it yourself. And this is where you totally beware of the abstract. Definitely look at those conclusions because the conclusions in these will tell you why maybe they won't do this again. And that is absolutely an excellent application of research. This you probably do not know about and it's brilliant. Um, I don't know about you, but I haven't been able to afford some of my professional um, associations that come with uh, different types of media magazines that I found very useful in my uh, work. Some of those are in this database. Now this is going to have books, professional development type things like teaching sociology, education. It's going to have all these tips. They're going to be both in the realm of trade magazines and also scholarly articles. This is really a great, great resource for you. And I too would love to be a resource for you. If you have a research problem, I'd be glad to uh, provide you with some links, some ideas, and some annotated pieces. I have absolutely no problem with that. That, I believe, is part of my work. So beyond zines, I'm also available because I absolutely want you to present. I want you to publish. I want you to have the best literature review ever. So reach me out, reach me out, reach out if you'd like to see those things. Now this selected bibliography is hardly exhaustive, but I wanted to use it as a lens to look at different types of zine pro projects. This first one it has a really lengthy, because it's in a library trends journal, piece on uh, a literature review so you can like really learn some things very rapidly and see some other items you might want to read about it. And um, this use of this thing was to call out microaggressions and build community. And it's a small non-commercial project that relied on anonymous uh, submissions. And uh, it did feature the post-it note method. And that, what that is, and I did it in the presentation today, I ask you, ask the people a question, like write two ideas about a thing, have them illustrate please illustrate and write it on a post-it note. And you can put those in like FAQs or ideas for or five ways to. It's like immediate and you could get it out in the same day. Um, this took a grassroots and a social justice approach. I really liked it because it told you the things specifically how they ask people to contribute and some other different ideas that you might have there. So this was a zine created as a group of people working together to try to solve a problem. And that's one use of a zine that you could use. Now, one of the questions is why should I uh, get a bunch of glue sticks and go after this project and not do digital projects? Guess what? You can do both. And in fact, uh, in the presentation, I illustrated how the library produced uh, well, actually, people produced more or less a broadsheet zine, and it was turned into a uh, zine. And actually, it's a little bit more of an art book than a zine. And it was turned into a hardback book. And then it was turned into a piece of art. Um, if you know me personally, I'm always telling you, if you, if you create in text and analog, I guess, you, you can never lose. You could turn it into all of the things. And so I think this is like a false sort of... Uh, I, either then, because actually if you start with print, all of the digital projects are beautiful and possible. But this, if this is in your mind, this is here. Uh, the zine writing project is writing about a personal perspective. And this talks about how uh, students were given a reading and then they were to use that reading to uh, answer some questions and write a zine. Now this zine was a reflective zine. It seemed to be done over an academic year. It's really quite detailed. And I do have a link to this article here so you can go look at the checklist. In my opinion, uh, the checklist is brilliant on several levels, but very comprehensive unless you want to do something of that length. The individual project issues are they could be a zine in and of themselves, frankly. And um, this in another article talks about the importance of taking away anxiety of users, students, and others working on zine products, projects and how to do that. Um, one of the ways I'm trying to help you do this is providing um, assistance, uh, research assistance, and of course the zine um, cart, wagon, backpack, whatever it is, and uh, space or assistance, whichever works. 
So, uh, but here, one of the valuable things is, is like, what's going to be on the cover? What is going to be on the second page? And that type of structure is very helpful for many people working on these things that have a little bit of anxiety. And uh, I have an anxiety about folding the one page scene, so I totally understand it. Uh, the zine project is, has a number of K-12 through projects, including using a research reflection project using Opposing Viewpoints database. It also has something around a day of service and other ideas. Many of these are quite valuable. They're really quick. They're very descriptive. They give you the who, what, where, how kind of scenarios that could make it replicable very quickly in a number of ways. Because this could also be used, zines could be used as a warm-up for another event, if you know what I mean. Report or reconstructing a zine is medium for reflecting on research experience. Now, this is the one where <laughs> I'm kind of laughing. I love reading scholarly articles because, you know, the pitfalls and the doom. So, in the conclusions, this is how this particular project ends up. And it's really a great project because they're using a 4R reflection scale as a framework to determine whether or not the research project actually worked. And they found that a lot of the students really got stuck around, uh, I guess, the first R in the series, not the higher level that they solved. And one of the reasons is because these students were flamoxed. They didn't use that word, by the way. Flamoxed about oh, what is a scene? Why am I doing this scene? Why am I finding myself in this particular uh, graduate class working on the zine? And uh, what does this have to do with how am I going to get graded well on this particular thing? You know, actually, the basic fears of students when confronting being graded on the unknown. So this talks about how one of the first things, if you're embarking on this project, make sure they know what it is. And in the presentation, my efforts on this was to show the zines that we have for checkout, the ones I'm going to have catalog, some of the agent ones I'm probably not going to have catalog, but I just want people to see what they are as a format. And just seeing how people put them together, I believe, will be more encouraging, inspiring than go say not describing one zine is. So I do have those things available for you to help you with that particular piece, which was a problem for this. And if you're going to do a type of reflection with a zine, this is going to kind of give you some idea about how to go about that in a way that could be used in a presentation or getting this piece published. Finally, we are uh, come to a science zine. I'm not going to annotate, I didn't annotate this particularly well here, but essentially the uh, effort was to move students from being consumers of information to producers of information. And, and to the most basic degree, that's also what a poster project usually to some degree ends up like. But this is slightly different and I'm going to actually have a project, a zine science project, I haven't figured out how or when, but it's going to be associated with the uh, Lindsay Gross uh, passion project that's going to be November the 9th, where she's going to talk about her passion for science, history, and her sabbatical. So uh, I think a few people may help me out with this. So look forward to that. And if you need to give your students some extra credit, I always uh, advocate using the passion project and failing that since I think this is going to be towards the end of the semester the science scene project might be something fantastic as well so these are all linked and you can give them a read if these aren't what you're interested in give these pieces a research if this doesn't cover it ask me to prepare something like an annotated uh, bibliography and links on the topic and I will be glad to absolutely do so now, when I talk about the zine wagon, what am I talking about? I'm talking about a piece that you can take to your classroom or I could set up in the library. That's right. You could check it out. And the people that could check it out, I will be totally fine if a student wants to check this out. Absolutely take it out for a staff meeting. Totally use it for a class. Take it away or bring it here. I can be your wingman. I can uh, do any parts of the lifting of this that you want and my dream is what I want you to publish I would love to see you present I would like to see you grow and enjoy something I would like you to be inspired I would love for you to be a person who creates content for others to use and I would like you to use library resources in this uh, great venture and this resource I think is going to be a wagon 
I'm going to have things to add. Currently, it's going to have paper, adhesives, uh, pencils and markers. It's going to have stickers, magazines, newspapers to cut up. It's going to have stamps. I already have a small collection rolling. Stencils, scissors, post-it notes, magazines, newspaper, and catalogs to cut up. It's going to have some prompt devices, um, probably an oracle deck of some case, or some random page or dice rolling kind of pieces because uh, actually those are very helpful is according to your project if it's a little bit more whimsical it might uh, those pieces the later pieces might be very useful but these will be in the wagon so that you if you're going to do the project uh, we just need to decide what kind of format you want to do with the paper and kind of establish do we want the people to fold it? You know what I mean? We just need to kind of look, work on the time, the effort, and how far in you want to go. But you'll have the materials, you'll have a wing person, and uh, you're going to have some research and some foundations for this type of work. Also, uh, there are some local organizations. There is currently an annual uh, Washington Zine Contest. It's open for all ages. Uh, it's due next year. You could connect this and already have something like this inside of your assignments and to encourage our students to, or not just students, your colleagues to uh, enter into this. There is a library of uh, zines. I have only, I would say at this point, five but I'm hoping to grow it, but also wanted to grow it with your work, students' work, and other local work as well, but this is in Spokane. There's also a printing and publishing center. While it is nonprofit, it does charge for some of the events. I myself am probably going to go uh, work on some of the wood cutting events and some of the other pieces. It's not extremely expensive, and it's not terribly far away. So I think it'll be uh, something interesting for me. And it might be something you find interested in too. It's kind of like getting your hands back into the print process. And uh, the Spokane Zine Fest. I would love for some faculty and students to go. But failing that, do know that it's usually in May. It's usually one day and it's very low cost. You'll meet a lot of zine producers in person and see their work. There's usually about... I'd say 12 different classes you could take at four different times during the day. Um, a lot of them are creation hands-on events. Uh, or I went to one that's talking about uh, drawing. Scenes don't require a great deal of skill in writing or art, but they will kind of increase in relation to each other and you're working on it. There was a presentation on how to do food scenes. I went to one about uh, drawing images and trying to come up with your main character. Uh, there's a great interest in that for me personally. And it was given by a person who actually illustrates some of our children's books we have at the library. I found that so exciting. So it's really quite a great event and it's usually held at the uh, public library downtown. Um, there are some zine libraries in Washington State. Of course, as you can see, there's the one in Harvard. There's some great ones in Oregon and uh, around Portland. There's some great stores. But these are uh, some of the libraries that are inside of the state. And you can browse some of them online. So I wanted to make sure those were available to you. So uh, the only thing you're missing uh, was handing out of the zines, I think, and some of the other details. And working with some of the objects would be in the zine wagon and understanding the folding and the use of the one page, excuse me, the one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but eight page zine. And uh, when you, if you do some of the readings here or do some research, you'll often hear that particular structure uh, used. So I kind of wanted people to understand what that is. Now, if you'd like to talk to me about a project, a personal project, a division project, if you'd like me to do this presentation or have a zine creation event as part of a meeting, a committee, uh, anything like that in your office for you, ask me because I'm your librarian and uh, it's okay to ask me questions. That's what I do. Let's have a great academic year. I think we really are. So I'll see you soon.